Uh, I'm Justin Googler, and uh, I'm home based at JSC, but I'm here today representing a group that's called NASA Forward. And our goal is to build networks for NASA's future. A uh, little background on myself. Yes, I did go to Texas A&M University. Thank you. <laughs> but I also, after I graduated from A&M, I decided that I wanted to go out in the world and have new experiences and uh, broaden my horizons. So I actually, even though I'd been an intern at JSC for three consecutive summers, I went and worked for the CIA for a few years as a uh, weapons and policy analyst. And then I came back to Texas and did a master's degree at Rice University looking at how you could use uh, neural networking and information theory for aerospace applications. And then that transitioned me into a job in the Constellation program. And now I'm working on doing uh, program uh, management support for the ISS National Laboratory, helping bring commercial development and uh, academia and industry users onto the space station to take advantage of those opportunities that Julie Robinson told us about uh, er uh, earlier in the week. But if, I, if I've learned something in all the different places I've gone, it's that Everybody wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Everybody wants to belong. They want to feel like they're part of a community. And I think we've put this group together called NASA Forward because we, we, all, we all see that need. And so uh, at the various centers, uh, there are uh, different kinds of young professional and professional development groups that have been forming. And over the past few months, we've been having uh, telecons and face-to-face -face meetings where we realize that everybody's interested in collaboration. Everybody sees a need to unify young professionals across the agency, regardless of their, their discipline or their background, so that we can, we can share our lessons learned, we can make that transition from the industrial age to the information age that Nick talked about, and, so, and that we can enable communication across disciplines, across generations, and actually build ourselves up to be that, that one NASA that we always talk about. So uh, we actually had a meeting uh, after TEDx NASA at Langley last fall where we uh, came up with a, a vision for ourselves as a group that we want to influence the future of NASA by empowering young thinkers and forward thinkers. And that's true regardless of what generation you're in. Because I know that I'm about to turn 30 next month. And the way I think about things isn't necessarily the same as somebody who is coming in fresh out of school, who isn't necessarily the same as someone who's been here for 30 years. But we all have something to bring to the table. We all have important perspectives, important lessons. And getting people on that same page where we can all talk to each other we think is important. And we want to do that by creating opportunities for establishing networks, for helping people overcome institutional barriers. But on top of that, it's all, all brought together by this idea that we can be a resource for each other. So that way, say, if I'm working on something at JSC and it's just driving me crazy and I don't see a clear path, I can go out to this network and say, hey, I'm working on this. I've, I've got this problem. Can somebody help me out here? And so maybe somebody at Goddard has developed a, a tool, or they've got a connection somewhere else in the industry on the unmanned side of the, the world that can help me out in getting a commercial partner on the station in a way that maybe I wouldn't have thought of before. Or vice versa, because of my experience working with commercial industry and academia and other government agencies, I can offer that knowledge and that experience to other people in these networks to help them do more than maybe they thought was possible. We've got, we've got some early initiatives that we've uh, kicked off to help uh, get things going. We've had face-to-face uh, -face workshops after TEDx NASA and PM Challenge, and that's really been primarily to try to just get everybody in the same room and get to know each other, understand uh, what our needs are, where we're coming from, where we want to see uh, the agency go, and uh, talk, essentially talk about what, what, our, what our vision of ourselves as an organization is. Uh, we've kicked off a couple of projects. Uh, one is called the Future NASA Project. Uh, that uh, actually came out of Langley. And the idea is that uh, 
it's a small group of uh, young professionals that have volunteered on their own time to go out and do research on uh, areas of uh, breakthrough, uh, set, for example, uh, physics, propulsion, engineering, information technology, essentially going outside of the traditional NASA spheres of influence and seeing, okay, what are some of these top technologies and uh, top ideas that are out there on the cutting edge that maybe don't have anything directly to do with what NASA is funding right now, but that we may want to keep an eye on because it'll have impacts for how we want to carry out future missions and future objectives. And we're working with uh, the chief technologists at Langley and Johnson Space Center to put that together. Uh, we also have a project that Nick can probably tell you more about than, than I will. It's, it's his baby, uh, the uh, NASA Forward Maker Camps. And the idea here is that one way you can build a sense of community is by giving people a common objective to work on, to bring people together, get them all in the same room, and start doing problem solving. And uh, through uh, the, the, web, the website for the maker camps, people are posting ideas and proposals for tangible, hands-on, uh, short turnaround projects that uh, people can work on at the various centers and essentially spend a day uh, coming together. And for example, at JSC, we're talking about uh, building a, uh, a visualization tool uh, based on an open source uh, format that Google came up with for doing uh, uh, high quality visualization. And so we're thinking, okay, maybe we can use this to help better illustrate what we're doing here at JSC and, and, and why we're doing it. But that's just a start. Young professionals at NASA need uh, a, kind of a, a gravity assist of sorts. We use gravity assists to help uh, get our uh, space probes out further than they, than they might have been possible otherwise. So we need that for the people that we have here, here at NASA. And because of this period of uncertainty, we recognize that we need to draw on the wisdom and experience of the people that have been here before us. And th that's a tremendous resource and it has a, a weight to it that uh, we wouldn't have otherwise. So how, how can we do that? How can we, we help each other, help, help ourselves? Storytelling, we think, is important. We, we want to know why. We need to know, that we need to know the context. We need to know why you, you've done things the way you've done them. And I know everybody says that old answer, uh, this is the way we've always done it. Well, why? why? Why should we? And it's not that we're trying to be impertinent about it. It's that we want to understand why things are done the, the way they are and so that way we can do the analysis to go back and say, hey, well, we know that we did things this way, but there's this new technology or uh, the theory has changed since then and there's this new information that maybe we didn't have 30 years ago and we can actually have a dialogue about a new way to go forward that's based on trust and respect. We also need integrative thinking. We, we want to know how what we're doing fits in the big picture. We need to understand where uh, we're all coming together in this, in, in this big, uh, big process. So for example, on the station, it's very easy to get bogged down in, in process. We're a very process-oriented organization. But I, I feel that I'm fortunate in the organization that I'm in because I have uh, management and mentors that take the time to explain to me why it's important that we get uh, commercial developers on the space station why it's important that we get other government agencies to take advantage of the unique capabilities that we have on the station. So that way when I'm down there working in the trenches, dealing with all the process issues to get those requirements captured, for example, or to uh, sort through some really onerous safety process, I know that I am doing this because I'm helping add value back to the nation. And that was something that I learned working at the CIA that I thought was really important is that Every day I walked into, walked into work going into the CIA headquarters, I knew I was doing something important. I knew that if I got my job right, I was probably going to save somebody's life down the line. But if I got it wrong, I might be responsible for killing someone. And I think that's also true with what we do in the, in the space flight enterprise. We're responsible for the crews that go up on the orbit. We're responsible for the payloads that fly, some of which are worth billions of dollars of blood, sweat, and tears that the taxpayers put into the system. 
And so I think if we can help each other understand where we fit in that system and where we fit in that process, that'll drive people to do, it, do the right things and take the extra steps to really do uh, in, incredible work. That, but that's where the participation aspect comes in. We need, to, we need insight into the projects that are coming down the line and the processes and planning that we, we want to understand not only how those, are, those decisions are made, but why those decisions are made and where it makes sense to do so and where it's possible to do so. We'd like to be included in that because we're going to be expected to carry those projects and programs out. We're going to be responsible for carrying that torch forward so that we can enable the next generation of exploration, so that we can enable the next generation of uh, earth science and uh, environmental studies. And if, you're, if, if we're going to be doing, doing that work, it, I think it would be kind of helpful to get us in at the beginning so that we, we know why we're doing it. And these are some ideas that, uh, that uh, we as a group have come up with for ways that we can help facilitate that process. But we also recognize that we're, we're, at this point we're essentially a group of volunteers from across the agency, engineers, scientists, technicians, uh, business, HR people, uh, we, we cover the gamut, but like I said, we're all volunteers. We don't, we don't have a, a budget or anything like that. So we've got these ideas for doing workshops on uh, educating young professionals on how space policy and government affairs are done, how to do advanced planning and strategy, how to, how to make a development roadmap, for example, or uh, organize case study groups, kind of like how, well, uh, everybody has book clubs. Well, how about we do case study groups where we have facilitators uh, bringing people together so that you, you look at a case study, spend time reading it, understanding it, asking questions about why things were done the way they were done, and if possible, bring in the practitioners that were involved in those uh, scenarios to help explain the rationale. Uh, another idea that we have is uh, a systems architecture camp, the idea that you bring people together that are interested in developing uh, systems of systems and teaching those fundamentals through participatory exercises, perhaps even uh, design challenges. We actually do that for uh, high school students and college students. But I know that in my experience as an undergraduate in engineering, we really didn't learn a whole lot about systems architecting. They were like, oh, you'll, you'll go learn that in grad school, maybe. And if we're expected to learn that on the job, then we need to have uh, better systems in place for actually teaching people those fundamentals so that way when they're expected to carry it forward into their work, they have the tools that they need to get it done. So NASA Forward exists to uh, create connections across the agency, across disciplines, and across the generations. We want to do this because we think the future of NASA depends on it. We need to live in a world where science and exploration aren't competing with each other. We need to live in a world where unmanned and manned are working together to accomplish objectives for the future and for the value of, of our country instead of uh, uh, competing with each other for uh, resources and attention. And we think NASA Ford can help be a force for good in that direction, but we also recognize that we're, we're, here to, we're here to help. We're here to, make, uh, to do good for the future of the agency and for NASA. We don't expect everything to be handed to us, so we need, we need your help. We need your help to put together projects. We need your help to uh, educate us on uh, why we're doing things the way we're doing things and why decisions are being made the way they're being made so that we can be a resource uh, to all of y'all. And yes, I am very Southern. I said all of y'all. <laughs>